morning. I'm Bill Porter, superintendent, and this morning I want to give a warm welcome to all of our students, staff, distinguished guests, and that includes board members and elected officials, and today especially to our veterans who are able to join us. For today's ceremony, I would ask that you make sure you silence all cell phones, and please be aware the uh, program today should wrap up close to the end of the bell schedule. However, if the bell rings while we're still here, I would ask that you remain in place. We will continue with our ceremony here today, and it should finish shortly afterwards. Uh, at this time, we have a presentation of colors, the Star Spangled Banner, and the Pledge of Allegiance. I would ask all of you to please stand at this time and remain standing until our Pledge of Allegiance is over.
Good afternoon. On behalf of Venner High School, I want to thank our local veterans, our teachers, Mr. Couch, Mr. Russo, Mrs. Waltz, and the rest of the Social Studies Department for organizing this ceremony today. Veterans Day is a day that honors all those who serve and currently serve in the, in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. I was not in the service. Um, I cannot understand the feelings a veteran or current member of the military has on this, on this day or on Veterans Day coming up. However, a friend of mine was. Uh, he was someone I met in seventh grade, he, and he served in the Navy. While the rest of my friends, we were going off to college, he went out to the Navy. He enlisted right away. At, at the time, I was so proud of him and thankful you know, for his service. But I tell you, as the years have passed, my admiration and appreciation for what he, what he did only grows. I know the sacrifices that he and his friends made, including one who made the ultimate sacrifice. He was stationed all over the world, including Afghanistan. Every time he was deployed, we were scared and eagerly, eagerly awaited his return. However, he was always positive, courageous, and took so much pride in what he was doing. Every, every passing year, the pride and admiration I have for my friend and his service for our country only grows. I cannot thank him enough for what he did to protect this nation and our freedoms. Many in this audience may or will have similar stories one day. <laughs> to our students, when you meet a veteran, ask them about their service or simply say thank you. Thank you all for choosing to honor our veterans today and show your support for our heroes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crow. And at this time, we'll hear from our student government president, Amanda Blacks. Thank you, Mr. Porter. On behalf of the Menor High School student body, I would like to extend my personal gratitude to each and every woman and man who stands before me that has served for this country. We owe you thanks, we owe you your respect, and we owe you our freedom. Since even before our founding, we have been blessed with the unbroken chains of patriots who have always come forward to serve. Whenever America has come under attack, you have risen to her defense. Whenever our freedom has come under assault, you responded with resolve. Time and time again, at home and abroad, you and your families have sacrificed to protect the powerful promise that all of us hold so dear, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Even if this means that your life, your liberties, and your pursuit of happiness was lost, our veterans have continued to persevere. As Alexander Hamilton said, there is a, cert a certain enthusiasm in liberty that makes human nature rise above itself. It's an act of bravery and heroism. Choosing to defend independence and democracy over one's life and over one's pursuit of happiness is true heroism. Too often, though, heroism is the ultimate price that many of these soldiers pay. And that price is something that we as society must always remember and be thankful for. The men and women who have fought bravely for our country have died to keep us safe and died to protect our rights. However, as a nation, we cannot just sit and thank our veterans. Instead, we must choose to lead and follow their actions. Our veterans have showed us that their service does not end when they leave the battlefield, but rather it is continued throughout the rest of their life as they rejoin society. Their patriotism and road to recovery is paved by persistence, hardships, and perseverance. As long as we continue to honor our veterans with, through their actions and remember their sacrifices, their work will never be forgotten. As the next generation of soldiers, leaders, and citizens sits before me, it is key to remember that now is our turn to live and act as our veterans have shown us, with bravery and with undetermined determination while never forgetting the ultimate price that those before us have paid. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Our next speaker is a World War II veteran who served in the Army. He has done tremendous things for our school district over and over through the years. He is also one of the founders of our annual Military Day Signing Ceremony. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Bob Zonneville. Good morning. 
and fellow veterans, guests, and students. Sunday is officially Veterans Day. Originally, Armistice Day, and this year has a special significance on the Armistice Day portion. It's the 100th anniversary of the end of World War I. It was later changed in 1954 to become Veterans Day, and we also changed its meaning. It was a day to remember those who made the supreme sacrifice and to honor all living veterans, including those who are presently serving. Aside from that, as I walked in here this morning, looked around, I saw all you young students out here, and it reminded me when I was about your age, and I did go to school, by the way, I used to think that a person that was 60 years old was quite ancient. I was discharged from the Army in 1945 after my tour of duty, which is 73 years ago. So I guess that uh, we've changed a bit. I'm a member of the George E. Hayward DFW Post here in Manor, and this should have some significance to you students because our post is named George E. Hayward. George was a graduate of Manor High School, lost his life flying helicopters in Vietnam, and today is buried at the Manor Cemetery. Since World War I, the percentage of the population who has served is not large. In World War I, it was six percent. In World War II, the high mark was 11 percent. That was primarily because the population was a lot smaller and was two wars, a war in the Pacific, a war in Europe. In Vietnam, it was five percent. Korea was five percent and presently less than three quarters of one percent of our population is serving in the armed forces to protect the 330 million the rest of us. As Winston Churchill so appropriately said during World War II, so much is owed to so many, by so many to so few. Today, Tomorrow, Sunday, a lot of people will be thanking the veterans for their service. But I also believe that since we owe all of our fellow citizens and all of you a great deal of thanks too. Prior to World War II, there was no Veterans Day. The remembrances were very rare. Today, Sometimes we have done a better job of remembering those who served than at other times, but it is still far better than it has ever been in our history. And sometimes I think we forget that. We didn't, go to, we didn't serve for the purpose of coming home to be remembered. We did it because it was a duty and a call upon. So I think too often we forget to thank all of you for remembering. Those that, the, the, the veteran does not make the decision where to go, what to do. When he served, he was pretty much confined to when he was born. I could not serve in Afghanistan or Iraq I'm too old. And those that served in Iraq and Afghanistan could not have served in World War II because they weren't born. So that doesn't mean they should get less respect. In our country's history, over a minute and a quarter have given their life to hold us to our democracy. I'd like to leave you or give you a couple of thoughts. Sometime back, I read in a newspaper a mother's dream. Her dream was I would like to give birth to a child who will ask. Mother, what was war? What a wonderful thought. I also would like to pass on 
another thought that I think some of us, or all of us, should think about. When you're in battle, or when you go into battle, knowing that it could be fatal, you do not care what all of those around you, what political party they belong to, what religion they practice, what nationality they are. All you ought to care about is their fellow Americans. And I think that we would all, it would do us a lot of good if we all thought about the same thing. A couple of days ago, I received a letter I wasn't sure I was going to read today. I'm not going to give you the author because the person may be here today. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe I've ever met the person. <clears throat> but if this letter arrived at VFW, it said, Dear Mr. Zonabo, I'm ready to thank you for providing your service for our country during World War II. I'm astonished by how willing you were to serve, and I commend you for being so dedicated. Although I do not wish to, to join the Army when I graduate from high school, I highly appreciate all of those who work extremely hard and risk their lives almost every day. Veterans Day is an extremely important day for me, especially since my cousin recently left to go to serve in the military. I can only hope that he never has to go through any traumatic experiences. But I feel honored to be related to someone who is going to be risking his life to protect us. I may never know the true efforts, effects of experiencing serving in the war, but I do know what it feels like to constantly be worried about my cousin and whether or not he will come back safely. Once again, I would like to thank you for serving our country. Serving the war, especially, especially World War II, that part of is an incredible feat. And I am so honored that one of, us, one of our own citizens of Lake County contributed greatly to the war. I can't give you the author because the only two people that know who wrote this letter, myself and the person who wrote it. I think we sometimes forget all of these thank yous and all of these remembrances. So, in conclusion, great occasions do not make heroes or cowards. They simply unveil them to the eyes of men. Silently and imperceptibly, as we wake or sleep, we grow strong or weak. And at last, some crisis shows us what we have become. I want to thank all of you for listening to this little man this morning. It's always an honor to be at the men's schools to see all of you. You are our future leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanaville. You are a cherished member of our school community, and thank you for your service. At this time, I will reintroduce Amanda Blatz, who will conduct the reading of names for Mentor High School's Wall of Freedom, followed by the removal of colors, the playing of taps, and our alma mater. At this time, I would ask you to stand and please remain standing for all of these until our alma mater has concluded. The Wall of Freedom at Mentor High School documents all of the Mentor High students who have lost their life as a result of military service. It is visible at, in the F Hall wing outside the main office. World War II, Harry Alchin. Robert E. Themis, Andy Booth, Vincent Russell Brown, Edward Cartworth, Alfred Cole, William Richard Day, Frank Hegesbach, Virginia Jewell, Harry Kopler, Ralph Merkel, Thomas L. Patterson, Maynard Shanower, Joseph F. Zardin, Jr., The Vietnam War, George Ernest Hayward, Howard Allen Mucha, Dale Allen Pierce, 
Lloyd Andrew Sellers III, Lloyd Edward Strowich, William Ronald Dickey, Jack William Logan Jr., James Joseph Menart, Paul Holland Mitchell, Michael Lester Ness, Dean Edward Nicholas, Carl A. Probler, William Thomas Hurd, Timothy David Sickle, Anthony Sir Lacey, the Iraqi War, Joshua S. Harmon, Mark T. Smukowski, and Joseph W. Lorek. Thank you for your service. Take a seat for just a moment. Again, we would like to thank everyone for joining us here this morning for our ceremony. And I want to thank Mr. Couch and Social Studies Department for their organization of this annual event. 
I would also invite, especially our students, at some time today, I would hope that you would take a moment to visit the Wall of Freedom that's here at Mentor High School, and please keep our veterans in mind this coming weekend. Thank you. Have a good day.